What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So what do you think is the best selling Samsung phone? Uh, all right, pretend you didn't already read the title of the video. You might think it's the S23, their flagship phone, but that didn't even crack the top five. Maybe it's the S23 Ultra. That's one of the best selling super premium devices. Actually, surprise, surprise, it's Samsung's sub $200 A14. Now there's two different A14s, the 4G LTE version a 5G version. I have a comparison video already on the channel explaining the differences. They're pretty similar phones, just intended for different regions. And collectively, around the world, the combined sales of the A14s are more than double any other Samsung smartphone, at least through the first half of 2023. But here's the thing. I actually don't find that surprising. I live in the US, so for this video, I'm mainly gonna talk about the A14 5G. This is a phone that's a fraction of the price of Samsung's usual offerings, but it's a perfectly good phone for 80 or 90% of the people out there. For starters, very few people even pay full price for this phone. It's available as a free device with a new line from T-Mobile or two bucks a month at AT&T. It's only $140 from Boost Mobile. You can get it for $99 on Straight Talk Wireless. There's a bunch of different ways you can get this phone for even cheaper than its already pretty cheap price. And what's most enticing about that is just the fact that this is a 2023 Samsung phone, not a no-name mystery junk device. When most people are used to seeing the $800 or $900 or $1,000 S-series phones, stumbling upon this Samsung phone probably feels pretty good. So for between zero and 200-ish dollars, what do you actually end up with? Well, the A14 is a phone that kept all the little bits and features flagship phones have long abandoned. So it's also a much more well-rounded and feature-packed phone for those of us who like the simple things. The headphone jack is still there, for example, at the bottom of the phone. It has a physical fingerprint sensor on the side, which I know some people still prefer over the budget and mid-tier under-display sensors. And probably most important, it still has a spot for a micro SD card. You can double or triple the storage on this phone easily for 10 or 20 bucks. And honestly, you'll probably need to do that. One of the biggest downsides to this phone is you only get 64 gigabytes of onboard storage to start with. So after all your favorite apps are installed and you've snapped a couple hundred pictures, you'll probably be hurting for more space. Speaking of apps, one of the most comprehensive cybersecurity bundles I've found to keep all my devices and data protected is from KeepSolid, who were kind enough to sponsor this video. Their Mono Defense bundle is a five-in-one app deal, all for a cheaper monthly price than your Netflix subscription. You can install the Mono Defense suite of apps on up to five different devices. VPN Unlimited is your first line of defense for staying safe on public and at-home Wi-Fi networks. With 256-bit AES encryption, VPN Unlimited makes it almost impossible for anyone to try and steal passwords, credit cards, or other sensitive info via the Wi-Fi. Passwarden allows you to store, manage, and autofill account email and passwords, credit card numbers, ID cards, and more. It can generate super secure passwords for you, let you know when one of your own might be compromised, and with duress mode, you can further hide your most sensitive information in a separate vault with a separate password. You give yourself one more layer of protection if you're ever in a situation where officials or law enforcement demand access. You can you can block malware and filter malicious traffic in real time with DNS firewall, access and stream all the major streaming services anywhere in the world with smart DNS, and you can further protect your online accounts with Authenticator, a 2FA tool that prompts you with a uniquely generated code to serve as one more login security check. Keep Solid's Mono Defense Bundle is available for $11.99 a month, and they even offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. Check out Mono Defense at the link down below, and thanks so much again to Keep Solid for sponsoring this video. So I've mentioned a couple of pros already for the A14, but this phone definitely has a couple of cons as well. Its design, at least from the front, is still very budget. The camera notch and big bottom bezel make the phone feel kind of dated or cheap. And even though it's a big phone, 6.6 .6 inches, it feels even bigger with those black borders. The screen to body ratio is just not that great. It's also not water or dust resistant. There's no IP rating. There's no wireless charging either. It's a basic plastic 
plastic build that looks even more boring in this black colorway. The only saving grace really is that the refreshed design on this year's various A-series phones make them all sort of look like an S-series from the back. The camera lens design is really what's most similar. Regardless of the chunky borders, the A14's 6.6 inch screen still looks pretty good. On the A14 5G here, it's a 2408 by 1080 resolution PLS LCD display with an adaptive 90 hertz refresh rate. The regular A14 doesn't have the high refresh rate, but that to me is sort of a standout feature on a phone like this. You'll need to enable it yourself in settings, and when you do, the phone is gonna look and feel a lot more fluid, smooth, and responsive with your taps, touches, swipes, and scrolls. When you flip back and forth between the standard 60Hz option and the adaptive 90Hz, I think you can see just how much more fluid the phone looks, but it's really something you need to experience yourself in person when you play around with it. Besides that feature, it is still just an LCD screen, and there's actually very little adjustments that you could make to have the screen be any bolder or more colorful. What you see is pretty much what you get here, but it's not a bad viewing experience by any means. It's decent, if a bit dim, and probably most important importantly, it at least looks sharp. On a phone this big, 1080 resolution is an absolute must, and Samsung didn't cheap out there. Even up close, you won't be picking out any pixels. More than anything though, I think most people just really like a big screen for watching content or scrolling through social media. There's a reason nobody makes small phones nowadays. Now, I alluded to this earlier, but one of the big reasons why I think so many people flock to this phone specifically is because regardless of its cheap price, at the end of the day, it is still a Samsung smartphone with all the Samsung-esque accoutrement that go along with that. The Samsung Android experience, which which to their credit has certainly improved on these budget phones, both in performance slash optimization and update support. This phone is on Android 13 with the One UI 5.1 update, which is already its second major Android version. And rumor has it this phone could also get Android 14. Performance wise, while it is still a budget phone with budget specs that also come with a bit of a stigma, more on that in a second, I think this phone is fast and powerful enough to be reliable and decent to use for most of the simple everyday things people would use it for, and maybe a little more than that. The A14 5G does have Samsung's dreaded Exynos processor, the 1330. The regular A14 has a MediaTek chipset instead, and yes, I and a lot of other people perpetuate the stigma that Samsung's own in-house Exynos products are generally not as good as comparable MediaTek or Snapdragon SoCs when it comes to performance and heat management and other important things. But I'm fairly certain that a vast majority of people who snag this phone won't be doing any serious gaming or pushing this phone beyond its limits on a daily basis. It's just not that kind of phone. For social media trolling, Netflix watching, email answering, and Google mapping, there's nothing wrong with the specs and performance here, and I think that's all that people who are buying this phone are going to be doing with it. There's also that big old 5000 milliamp battery inside this thing, which I think further solidifies its utility for the average consumer. This is a phone that will absolutely last the day and then some without ever needing to be plugged in. In fact, if you use this phone for basic phone calls and text messages and maybe not a whole lot more, it can be on standby for two days or more without a charge. Your experience obviously will vary based on how you actually use your phone, but this is a device that has the big battery people tend to ask for nowadays. The most budgety of the budget components on this phone really is the camera setup, but I'm going to make one final argument in defense of this phone and the people who buy it that may also be a bit offensive, but so be it. The triple lens camera setup by itself isn't awful. You get a 50 megapixel main shooter, a 2 megapixel macro for super close shots, and a 2 megapixel depth sensor for portrait pics. And the selfie camera is a perfectly fine 13 megapixel lens. Inside the camera app, there's enough features and functions where it doesn't exactly feel basic. It's just so far below today's flagship phones simply because that's all smartphone manufacturers focus on with the flagship phones, camera stuff. But the thing is, with this phone, and even with $1,000 flagship phones, 
A vast majority of people simply whip it out, maybe tap to focus, and then snap a quick pic in whatever default shooting modes and settings were preloaded when the camera app popped up. Very few people are specifically opting for 4K video recording or taking the time to adjust the blur on a portrait pic, or would even know how to switch to the full 50 megapixel camera mode for better, more detailed shots. And let me be clear, that's not a bad thing. This phone takes perfectly fine, regular old pictures, and sometimes the simpler the shot, the better. You can live in the moment, not through the lens of your smartphone. I just find it interesting that there's so much emphasis on these crazy over-the-top camera specs nowadays, when in reality, as long as the phone takes a decent pic quickly and easily, that's mainly what people want. All in all, Samsung's A14 is their best-selling phone, simply because it's the best way to get an inexpensive device that's still a Samsung in nearly every capacity. It's a budget phone, for sure, but for the people who just need a familiar and reliable device for their everyday tasks, the A14 is gonna get the job done. And it's so cheap by comparison, a fifth the price or less than an S series, but it's not that much worse when you consider what everyday folks actually do with their phones. Simple stuff. And here in the US, it's also an affordable way to maybe get 5G network support if it's available, though I know the regular A14 for the rest of the world wouldn't consider that a factor. But what do you guys think? Do you have an A14 yourself? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video, though. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys later.